Hi, I am Rech Kimonidis. I represent UK Sampling Gauges, and today I will present to you the MK10 closed sampling equipment that we manufacture here in UK Sampling Gauges. To start with, I will describe to you the spot sampler ALS1089. This device, as you can see, has a top bulb, a spring loaded system here that seals the top end of the sampler very positively and very easy and also it's got um, a bottom cap that you can screw on. This bottom cap is specially designed that allows the operator to take the samples from the sampler without holding the sampler in his hands. Next sampler we have is the running sampler. Our running sampler, it has a, a specially designed uh, filling and uh, air escaping system at the top that allows the sampler, as it's descending into the liquid, is not affected by the outside pressure. It, this means that the sampler's filling rate is the same at one meter depth, 10 meter depth, 30 meter depth. So, if we have a system that allows us to lower the sampler at a steady rate and bring it up steadily again, the sampler, sample we get is representative of that particular column of the tank. Uh, the uh, bottom cap is, uh, again, it can be removed and uh, we can clean the sampler very easily. The top end, again, is got uh, an adjustable uh, orifice uh, where uh, allows us then to adjust the filling rate uh, depending on the oil viscosity or how deep the oil is, if it's 10 meters or 20 meters and so on. I can give you an example uh, for um, a gas oil, 14 meter depth, uh, we can set the sampler at uh, two, two notches. We have a setting here, you can see two notches. Uh, for heavy fuel oil, we come up to six to nine notches, depending on the viscosity again. This device is our bottom sampler, enabled to take true bottom samples. The device is lowered into the tank, and as it's going through the liquid, it's unaffected by the outside pressure, and it opens only when it touches the bottom of the tank. At that level, you start taking the sample right from the bottom end, and there is case from the top non return valve. The bottom part of the sampler, it can be adjusted, so we are able then to take the sample at the oil-water interface. And that enables us then to monitor our tanks for any uh, microbial activity. The, to empty the contents, you just, when you bring the sampler at the top, then we empty the sampler into the bottle, and then we may have to depress the, to release the vacuum, the bottom valve. So we take the sample straight into the bottle. Very easy to clean. The top cap can be removed, and the bottom end can come off, and this is our sampler. Another interesting device we have is the LSBV sampler that enables us to use bottles. So that means we do not decant the sample we get. The sample goes straight to the bottle and then we retrieve the sample bottle without having to decant the contents. Very easy to use device. And then with this particular probe we have on the sampler here, enables us to take all level sample. That means from top to bottom. Once we stop or try to retrieve the sampler, the valve closes and then uh, no liquid goes into the, into the bottom while we retrieve the sample. With this particular device, you can use a bottle like this one and provided the overall diameter can fit in the 
in the sampler here, it can be used. So we can use various types of bottles. With the, on this sampler here, we have uh, a spot sampling probe. So as we lower the sampler into the liquid, the entry hole is closed. And then when we reach the level we want, we lift the sampler about 20 to 30 centimeters. And at that point, the float goes downwards, opens the valve, and we get the sample at that level. Again, this one, very easy to put the bottle in, very easy to take it out. Again, this is based on a principle that the sampler and the filling rate is not affected by the outside pressure during descent. This means that our sample represents that particular column that we sample. To use our MK10 winder, four inch type valves are required. Also, we need the right coupling. Our MK10 winder can be used as a mobile unit where we will need a coupling like this one, which then will enable our sampler to feed on the VEBA control valve. Uh, our VEBA control valves need to be 4 inch ball valves. The valves you see here are stainless steel ball valves. The coupling, as I highlighted to you, is uh, this particular coupling, is what they call uh, DIN 28450 MB DN 100 PN 16. If we don't want our sampler to be mobile unit, it can be fixed on top of a tank, and in that case, maybe the customer does not require it to be fitted with this type of coupling, but he wants it to be with a flange. And then the flange gets bolted on the Weber control valve. Okay, our winder here, MK10, is um, 10 and a half kilograms weight plus the weight of the sampler. So we can move it about and then on the tank, this is fixed permanently on the tank. And our mobile unit, there we are ready to use our winder. Now our MK10 winder has various uh, parts here that I will be describing to you. Firstly, these latches we remove, we can lift the sampler upwards, and we have a tape here that is specially designed uh, and made so it goes through a system where it, a counter is operated and the counter then enables constant reading of the depth of our sample. To fit the sampler with it upwards, need to lock locking nut here so the sampler cannot come off and before I demonstrate the sampler I need to explain to you the various other parts we have on the wind. This particular knob here once we press it down the sampler is lower our winding knob a winding arm and here we have our counter we have a wiper here that we use while we wind in the sampler and 
down this part here, we have this emptying system that enables us to empty the sampler once we retrieve it. So once we are ready to lower our sampler, the one that is probably connected on the Weber control valve, the tank may be pressurized, uh, then we open the Weber control valve and then we are able to start sampling. We have a spot sampler fitted onto our system, so a lower our sampler to the required depth and with the counter system we have, very easy to go quickly to the required depth. At that level, we make this snatch on the line and we wait 10 to 20 seconds, depending on the viscosity of the product. So when we start winding the sampler in, remember we need to use our wiper so we wipe the tape as we bring it in. We fill the sampler that came into the housing. We can see also our counter that shows zero reading. Uh, at that point, we close our Weber control valve. And should the tank be pressurized, we close the control valve. But again, this one remains uh, a little bit pressurized. So at that point, we can release the pressure with this facility we have here. So we depressurize the chamber of the winder here so we don't have uh, a spray of gas as we try to open it here to take our sample. And there we are able to take our sample. Sample, one liter sample, we push the door down again, we close firmly our emptying system and uh, we release the, knock, the locking knob here and also uh, if, we, if we're going to take another sample before we lock it here by pushing it backwards after we release uh, this knob here, our sampler is locked for the next operation without having to touch the sampler or the tape. And now our system is ready for another sampling. We can use our running sampler. As we described before, we can set it to the right notch, lower to the level we want, bring it up, and there we don't need to use our locking knob here for our running sampler. And then we take the sample exactly the same way as we uh, have done on the uh, spot sample. Uh, when we use our bottom sampler, we cannot use our emptying system to take the sample. With this one, we have to uh, remove the sampler physically from the uh, winder to take the sample into our bottle. We have here uh, our um, uh, sampling cage, LSBB uh, 1002, this particular one, that is able to take this particular bottle. We make sure again that uh, our probe seal fits well with the bottle. Make sure it's well screwed in. And we lower the sample. Lock it. We are ready to take our sample. We open a Weber control valve. So we lower the sampler at the required depth. To this point, 
we, our assembler is empty. Once we reach the required depth, we lift the sampler in this way. And we wait there 15, 20 seconds. Remember, we do not bring the sampler that way, because what happens, the sampler goes up and downwards again, and the float doesn't play well, doesn't open and close well. So when we bring the sampler upwards to open, and bring it slowly up and stop. You wait there uh, 15, 20 seconds, depending again viscosity. And there, again, when you start retrieving the sampler, remember we use our wiper and bring the sampler. The sampler is in the housing. We close the weather control valve. We lift up our And there, we take the bottle with the sample. 